Welcome back to Dimitri's Garage. Today I'm going to be working on my truck again. Now, if you remember last time, I had an issue that I thought maybe is a fuel injector. I was using Auto Ingenuity to try to work it out, but I really wasn't getting a good answer on what the deal with the truck is. I was able to do some more advanced troubleshooting that Auto Ingenuity really just couldn't do for me, which was the power balance test, and I'll show you that in a second. And then I'll show you what the fuel injector looked like and give you a few tips on how I replaced it. Now, before we get started with all of that, I did just get some cool stuff from Adam's Pop. Polishes. They're not a sponsor. I, you know, I wish they were, but they're not. And uh, I'm just a really big fan of their products. Not everything they make is what I use. I use some other products too. All their products tend to be really good. If I'm ever in doubt and I just need something, that's my first go-to. So this time, what I got from Adams was a mystery box and a mystery bucket. Now, this is supposed to be kind of a random selection of products and it's supposed to be more value than you're paying for the box. I've never really done it before. It always felt a little like the lottery. What if I get a bunch of stuff I don't really want to use? Now, I've genuinely not looked inside these, so I don't know what I'm going to get. I have used probably most of Adams products. So I'm just kind of hoping I get some stuff I really like using. So I think we'll start with this mystery box, kind of a cool little label. A polishing towel. As you can see, Adam's uh, towels, they take a lot of pride in them. They're, you know, it's pretty pricey. So the next product that I got is this microfiber wash mitt. And I think that's not an unfair price for a good wash mitt. Now, I personally don't actually stick my hand inside the wash mitt. I just use it like a uh, sponge. I feel like I don't use the whole surface if I got my hand in there. They're uh, all-purpose cleaner. So I've admittedly never actually used it. I've had other degreasers and my cars tend to stay clean. But you know what, on some of the older stuff like my truck, this can probably be really good for the engine bay. This I actually really wanted to try. It's their Ultra Foam Shampoo. Now this is for foam lances and uh, cannons and things like that. I've been using just their blue stuff. This is supposed to be a lot better for what I do. Now I have a whole huge tub of the blue stuff. So guys, here are my various bulk products that I use and uh, there's the shampoo on the left here that I was talking about. Let's see what else we got in here. Uh, I know this stuff. This is the VRT. I don't go through a ton of it. I still have about half a bottle. This stuff is really good for dressing up vinyl and rubber. If you want a matte, not shiny, not glossy, like a nice matte finish. And it helps restore some of the black color. So guys, here's the sum total of what I got in this box. Somewhere around $73 without uh, any discounts or coupons. Adams always has discounts and coupons. I paid 30 bucks for all the stuff. Now that's a lot more than you normally get with a traditional sale. But again, I didn't get to pick what I got. Time to open this big bucket thing. That's kind of what you wind up getting, and I do see a bunch of stuff I already know in here. Glass cleaner. Uh, this stuff is good. I do use it. was just actually using it yesterday. Leather conditioner. This one I do know. I have about half a bottle. It seems like it's the same formulation. The color seems the same. An earlier one I think used to be a little more yellow back in the day. So this is the regular car shampoo. I have that giant tub. Wow, I actually didn't recognize it at first. The buttery wax. It says that it lasts a month. I'd say it lasts about a car wash. So next time you wash, you're probably going to wash it off. Now, maybe it's better now, so the formulation looks different. It's very yellow. This bottle is uh, not that old, probably right before I got this house, and you can see the difference in the color. Glass towel. Um, you know what? I've actually been looking for a good glass towel. This looks very nice. Excited to try this out. I can kind of see why it would be good for glass. It doesn't seem like it would leave a lot of streaks and residue. All right, so this is the Great White Drying Towel. I've had one of these before. I didn't uh, enjoy it years ago. I felt like it didn't really pick up much water. Now, this thing is $25. Like I said, they're very, very proud of their towels. Not that excited about this one. This stuff is really good. This is the detail spray. Just can never have enough of that stuff. So one of the last items is this uh, hex grip wax applicator thing they sell. Seems like a nice applicator. I've never used one of theirs. All right, last thing in the box, and this one's a little bit of a disappointment. It's the glass sealant. They gave me a sample of it. I've applied it a bunch of times. I'm following the directions. I just, it just doesn't seem to do anything. So, and the really crazy thing about this glass sealant is like the reviews are all really, really good. Maybe I got a bad bottle. I will try this bottle in case I got a dud. I paid 70 bucks for this thing, including the bucket. Total value ended up being around $150, so. When you do the math, it's again about half off. Pretty much everything here I'm gonna use. You know, interested in the tough glass towel. Maybe a little disappointed in getting this great white drying towel and this glass cleaner. I think if they're running a nice special on the mystery boxes, I might do it again. I think the real trick is you have to really like most of a company's products. So guys, let's go work on that truck and uh, I'll put this stuff away. So I'm in the truck now. I don't have a great way of rigging up a camera, unfortunately. So I'm sorry about the shaky video. However, I've got the IDS software spun up and the hardware is plugged in. 
Now we can do some testing that our auto ingenuity couldn't handle. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the ignition on so that we can get started. So now basically I just have to start a new session in the software and we'll be ready to go. This part can take a few seconds, it's pretty normal. We're gonna start seeing the truck do all kinds of things as the software kicks in. Just broke the 150K mark, hey. Okay, so we're gonna go to powertrain and then select power balance. Put it in gear, maintain a steady load. Key on, engine on, start engine, press tech button, use reverse to test if you need to be in gear, similar to the auto ingenuity process. I'm gonna set the parking brake, I know it works well, just replace both the cables and this will allow us to go into gear without holding the brake. Okay, I can definitely feel it now. That's interesting, number four is looking a little weak as well, but number one actually looks horrible now. Let's try it in gear. Wow, that number one is really bad. I'm still not sure about number four and five either. Is that an injector issue or are they just compensating for the bad number one injector? One thing for sure is that this is working a lot better than auto ingenuity. All right, here's the firing order for reference. As you can see, number one is the first cylinder on the passenger side. It's supposed to be the easier side to do with inaccessible bolts being the main issue. Now we can try the manual mode where we can shut off an injector at a time. We do need to get it out of gear first. We can try turning off injectors that appear to be working well and it should make a big difference. Now if we turn off the number one suspected bad injector, it just shouldn't do anything. Yeah, look at the huge difference turning off number two makes compared to when we turned off number one. At this point, I'm gonna have to concur with the forum. This is probably a bad injector. I'm gonna go ahead and pull it out and swap in a remand one. Now, I am still a little concerned about number four and five. Let's try to run another test. I don't know how good the relative compression test is versus an actual compression test. Apply the parking brake, apply the neutral gear position, fully depress the accelerator pedal to the floor and hold. Crank engine for 10 seconds until test is complete. Interesting, it shows number four and five as being a little weak. Yeah, 1% difference. I wonder if that's why they're weaker in the balance test. It is super bright out here, guys. Well, I pulled the injector out of the truck and this is what it looks like. I'm not gonna do a full guide on how to pull it out. There's a ton of other videos out there that are actually really high quality. I'll link the one I used. You know, sometimes when I do these for, you know, flushing the transmission on the 240, um, I just didn't see another video that I felt was concise and had everything done the right way. There's tons of videos on these specific trucks. It's a very common issue. Lots of people know how to fix them. So take a look in the description. There'll be a link there. I'll just note a few specific things that I did that really helped me. So guys, here's a nice close up of the injector. You can see it's uh, quite large. It's very different than normal mechanical injectors that you will find in your regular gas car or even most diesels. This one utilizes highly pressurized oil through this hole here to essentially set off a plunger that will inject the fuel that it picks up into the engine. It allows for more control over the spray and the pressures involved and things like that. It's actually supposed to be a pretty cool technology, but they give you a lot of trouble. So that little guy lives right down there under the valve cover. It makes it a lot harder to take out than some traditional designs that would go above the valve cover like we're used to. So guys, not a very complicated job overall. It's mainly an issue of inaccessible bolts and frustration. When you start out, you're gonna first kind of get rid of the tube that goes from the turbo to the intercooler, which runs over here. You're gonna clean up some of the wiring and move it out of the way. That's all fairly straightforward. So once everything's out of the way, it's gonna be time to remove the valve cover. And this is where the first inaccessible bolts will kind of present themselves. All the top stuff and the stuff in the back is relatively easy. Some of it you can get rid of with an electric or pneumatic wrench. So the issue is really gonna be on the bottom left there where the inaccessible bolts will start. For the valve cover, you may be able to get certain ratchets in there that are very shallow profile. You may also be able to get uh, wrenches in there. There's several different choices. The really inaccessible bolts are gonna be regular bolt head. They're not gonna be a stud style bolt head. So once the valve cover is removed, something like this is gonna be your best friend where it's gonna be really stubby and magnetic and allow you to reach bolts that are gonna be on the oil rail down there. You're gonna see this nice big oil rail kinda heading over all the injectors. Those are what feed the oil. Two bolts, again, by the air box all the way in the bottom there. That's where that little tool I just showed you will come in. There's lots of other ways to do it, you know, stubby sockets. You'll also have to break a really large hex 
on it to remove the kind of feed tube that goes inside the block. You're gonna probably need a breaker bar just like in the video that I'm gonna link. Just take your time and make sure, uh, it's a little out of order in that video, make sure you do that hex bolt before you do the torques that go all around that are inaccessible. Otherwise, the oil rail is gonna be loose when you go to break it and you're gonna find yourself needing to put all the bolts back in. Another thing I wanted to review were the torque ratings. So for the injector itself, I'm being told 26 foot pounds for the stay uh, because I have a newer style truck. My instructions from all data uh, tell me 24. So um, it's possible that all data instructions are kind of not year specific, unfortunately. I'm gonna guess that these 10 foot and 60 foot pounds are probably fine, as well as these torque ratings. One thing to note on this oil rail, there's a sequence to how you're supposed to bolt things down. So guys, at this point, I'm just gonna go ahead and reassemble and uh, crank the truck up, and hopefully that solves my problem. But I'm actually fairly confident that it's probably this injector. I've talked to a lot of people online, uh, especially this guy, Sean, on the Ford truck forum. He's been amazing. Everybody's been really helpful. So I'm learning this. Hopefully you guys will learn a little something too. So guys, I got lots of stuff I gotta go finish up in the garage. For now, I really hope you enjoyed this episode. If you enjoyed it, please click like, leave me a comment. I really appreciate that stuff. Man, it's bright out here. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and finish the truck and run inside. I'll see you guys later.